Hello everyone, welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. And uh, a bit of a sad story, a frustrating story, uh, breaking across South Africa yesterday. And uh, a bit of an update with regards to when might we see the Rugby World Cup, Men's Rugby World Cup, uh, come back to South Africa. And the answer apparently is no time soon with SA Rugby set not to submit a bid to host the 2035 Rugby World Cup after narrowly losing out uh, to France for the 2023 World Cup in very, very uh, controversial uh, circumstances. And uh, apparently because of financial issues um, or the financial sort of uh, commitment that we have to make to the World Cup being the reason we're not going to potentially bid for the next World Cup, which will mean more than 40 years um, until between the foot well, the last time we won the, the host of the World Cup and the next time we'll probably host the World Cup, um, which apparently is not going to happen anytime soon. But before we get to it, please do smash a like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. So let's take it back to um, the 2023 bid where SA Rugby handed over a, a, a bid, for example, which obviously has a whole sort of uh, analysis of, you know, and, 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 and sort of research on why we should be hosted, for example. If you look at the facilities, the economy, the, the tourist destination, what we're going to commit to be doing, for example. And we were actually first place in the technical review of potential hosts. However, it then went to a round of anonymous voting and uh, all of a sudden France won the vote, which was very, very strange. And, and, and the whole thing was, you know, it almost said to be all sorted and we all thought that this was going to be it, that, you know, the World Cup was going to come back to South Africa for the first time or was going to be closed on 30 years. And it didn't happen. And uh, it very much felt like it was taken from us. You know, there was lots of, uh, you know, there's there's allegations that there was a bit of, uh, you know, favours and behind, this, behind the closed doors conversations happening with other parties and other voting members, for example, um, which all then sort of culminating in France getting uh, the World Cup. The next two couple of World Cups have already been announced. 2027 will be in Australia and 2031 will be in the United States, which meant that the next opportunity for us would be 2035. However, apparently that is not an option. So yesterday, the Sunday News uh, paper report said that SA Rugby has um, been deterred from entering a bid because of the cost of the quiet guarantee um, and uh, the, the experience of the, the last sort of World Cup. And because of what happened in, in the World Cup voting, apparently it left us very cautious about the whole thing. So uh, allegedly, um, the South African government will have to provide a 300 million rand guarantee for the 2035 which um, has been deemed far too expensive. As, not, not surprising, really, in terms of, uh, you know, do we have that kind of money? You know, it, it, should we be putting that kind of money into hosting a World Cup, for example? And uh, it's going to be an interesting one. You know, for example, you've got somebody like Gator McKenzie, the current uh, Minister of Sport in South Africa. Now, he's trying to uh, do a lot of uh, sort of big moves. Uh, you know, trying to bring the Formula One back to South Africa, for example, which is going to cost a lot of money. And it'll be interesting to see if he gets onto this because he very much, and mo as most of South Africa is, they're trying to use the um, Springboks as, you know, the the golden boys of, of, of the country. And, you know, hosting a Rugby World Cup would be massive for the country. First of all, you've got the stadiums. Um, you know, it would be massive crowds. We all know that we're a great tourist destination, but hosting these tournaments are incredibly expensive. And you really have to weigh up the financial benefits. So we've got the 2027 Korea World Cup coming up, for example. I think it'll be an interesting World Cup to see where we are as a country by that time, how it's going to go. And what will be frustrating is, is if it's really, really successful, it shows you uh, exactly how beneficial it will be. But we but then it'll be too late, for example, the 2035 World Cup. But I reckon that'll probably be a bit of a case study with regards to us hosting a Rugby World Cup in maybe like 2039, for example. Do we then look for that? And do we then wait a few years, look at exactly where we are, see if we can try and find the funds and then put forward the bid? The only other option is, you know, is, is if they can find other ways of funding the 300 million. Because the problem is that the government has to put up the money. Uh, you know, if it's SA Rugby, for example, you could probably find you know, various different deals, for example, you know, you could look at the, the, the fact that they want to sell a part of the commercial part of the, of the SA Rugby brand and uh, maybe find 300 million rand. I'm not where, it's an incredible amount of money. It's, I mean, that equates to about a, about a fourth, a quarter, maybe just about a fifth of uh, the South African sort of revenue, the SA Rugby revenue was about 1.5 billion rand. You know, so it's, it's, it's a pretty big amount. And until we can have that money, we can have that guarantee, Apparently, that's going to stop us from, from putting in a bid. So it's not confirmed. It's obviously just reports, but very frustrating because we all know, first of all, how rugby mad South Africa is as a country. You know, the, bringing rugby to South Africa is 
you know, like bringing rugby home to a certain degree in terms of just how many, how big the fans are. It's it's a bit of a, becoming a bit of a religion in the country. We've obviously gone back to back champions, you know, so it's a World Cup we could win at home soil. We lost it in 1995, arguably the most iconic World Cup of all time. And we're desperate to have it again. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's going to happen at least within the next sort of 11 years. So, uh, you know, for me, my time's ticking here. You know, I'm in my prime at the moment. You know, I'll be, I'll be about, almost, I'll be close to 40 in 2035. I'll be into my 40s if it happens after that. So uh, frustrating, frustrating. But let me know what you think. Is it too much? Is it feasible? Should we be pushing this? Should we not? What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. Smash a like on the video and subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.